Brenna Bell and I'm the staff attorney and NEPA coordinator for BARC and I've been evaluating the recent jazz decision and environmental assessment that have come out and trying to understand how the Forest Service responded to the overwhelmingly negative um, public comments that they got about the sale given that it will rebuild over 12 miles of previously decommissioned roads and log 2,000 acres in the most unstable watershed in all of Mountain Hood National Forest and about 3,000 people commented on the sale asking for the Forest Service to cancel the sale or decrease the environmental impact of the sale. And in response, the Forest Service said, no, sorry, we're going ahead just as we planned and incorporated barely none of the public comments. And in so far as I can tell, the only public comment, the only comment that the Forest Service actually adjusted their sale for was that of the Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation, which likes to kill elk, and that is to increase the amount of heavy thinning so as to increase elk habitat, they say for forage, because I guess elk love clear cuts, um, even though lots of science points to the fact that early successional habitat in clear cuts is actually not very effective to elk because it just grows back in dug fir trees, which is not what elk like to eat. So what we're seeing is an agency that has predetermined the outcome of its decision and knew what it wanted to do. And despite the overwhelming public opposition and very detailed comments on behalf of many individuals and organizations, including BARC, is going ahead, doing something that it touts as restoration, but will really have a, a huge environmental impact on a very sensitive watershed at a quite a large price tag to the citizens and to the forest. Um, actually, one fact that I think is really interesting that we have unearthed by just reading a lot of the backstory is that it's going to cost $250,000 to rebuild roads that the Forest Service has already spent hundreds of thousands of dollars decommissioning just so it can come and log, calling it restoration, and then it's going to spend another $60,000 re-decommissioning the roads and at the end of the day they will be in much worse condition than they are currently after you know five to fifty years of restoration and recovery so we're going to see three hundred thousand dollars spent to get these roads to a worse place than they already are with a lot of environmental impact in the interim and again they're calling this a restoration sale it's kind of unfathomable Jazz is spread out over about 30 miles in the Kalawash watershed and it covers a scope of about 2,000 acres. Um, and, and the Kalawash is very unique. It is mostly comprised of things called earth flows, which are like large moving glaciers of earth. And you can imagine putting a road across that or even cutting on that and saturating it with more water can be really destabilizing. And so there's a lot of landslides, roads buckle, trees move. The Kalawash is just moving. It's a very unstable watershed. And so to go into a place that's actually in recovery, that's the other amazing thing about it, is it's in recovery after decades of mismanagement to go back in and kind of reopen the wound, peel off the scab, and retard the recovery is something that Bark is really concerned about. And it happens over a large area with a lot of diffused and dispersed impacts, but that doesn't make them worse. In some ways, it exemplifies the fact that there's so many impacts because that's 80 miles of road that log trucks hundreds and hundreds of log trucks will be going in, grinding the roads into dust, spilling that dust into the rivers where salmon are fighting to stay alive. So these are all the, you know, some of the concerns that Barks had. And kind of the ironic thing is almost the entire area that the Jazz Timber Sale is in is designated a special emphasis watershed, is in late successional reserves, in riparian reserves, and is in high earth flow areas. And all of those land designations are focused on protecting the water quality, the soil productivity, the habitat. Only nine acres of that 2,000 acre sale are in timber emphasis. Only nine acres. And yet, what are they emphasizing in this sale? Removing commercial timber. And so we think it's you know, very incongruous with the land designation that the Forest Service's only approach to restoration is to build roads and to log commercial trees.
I think it's safe to say that Bark knows this timber sale on the ground better than anybody else, even the Forest Service. We've had over 600 volunteer hours in the forest checking every single bark, um, every single jazz unit. I, mean, I think there's about 180 of them, except two, which are inaccessible in their helicopter landing units. So we've been out there, we've covered the ground, we've walked the roads, we've walked the decommissioned roads, we've taken extensive data, we've given that to the Forest Service through comments, through meetings, through letters. We've also generated a lot of letters. Like I said before, 3,000 people commented on the jazz sale. And at the end of the day, the Forest Service said, sorry, your information's not good for us. We're going to go forward with exactly what we planned. So in, in a way, it's a little dispiriting. Um, but in another way, it's incredibly empowering to know that we know that sale better and to know that we have information that we're going to keep pressing the agency to do the right thing. So now we're in a process where a few different things are going on. One is we're preparing an appeal of the decision of the timber sale. And if that appeal is denied, we'll probably move forward with litigating the sale. Another is we're asking people to start calling or writing their representative or senator to let them know that the Forest Service is just simply managing our national forest the wrong way. And rather than managing it for uh, recreation, for water quality, for habitat, for the values that Portlanders really love in their, in their forest, they're basically managing it for private timber company profit. So if you go to our website, www.bark-out.org, there's an action page where we're sending letters and giving comments to our senators and our representatives, and we encourage folk to do that now, to put pressure on the Forest Service, kind of from the people here and from the representatives here, and you know, kind of let them know that we're all watching, and these are our lands and not theirs to mismanage.